Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin Eun Sun. Did you ever go into a guest shop or a gift shop, I guess? in the southwestern United States. And you walk in and you see this thing. And it's basically a rabbit with antlers. They're called jackalopes in the trade. So hairs with horns don't really exist, right? We, we know this. Rabbits haven't hippity hopped down the evolutionary trail to the point where they've grown antlers. And do you ever have a, an argument with somebody inside your head? Like somebody who isn't actually in the same room with you? And I forget whether you win or not in that kind of scenario, but still. And when you took the trip to the Southwest, was the high point of the entire trip, in retrospect, the gift shop with the jackalope in it? Did the B&B &B really not live up to expectations? Did the hotel room have the same damn picture in every single room that you stay in? And yet, do you make plans to go back on that same vacation every year, time and time again, because you know it can't always be that bad? So Bodhidharma, guy over here, he comes from the West. In fact, there he is. That's the Western Wall, in fact, kind of close as it gets here. And he brings with him his bowl and his robe and a copy of the Lankavatara Sutra. And his student, after a while, if you know the story, Huiko, also gets a copy of the Lankavatara Sutra from Bodhidharma. And the Lankavatara is, in a lot of ways, like a, um, a sutta out of the Pali Canon. Pali Canon. And, you know, it's, it's Mahayana in the sense that there is... Um, you know, a question from one of the bhikshus and the Buddha answers. So it's it maintains that kind of format. But it also is riddled with bullet lists. You know, what are the seven kinds of this? What are the seven kinds of that? What are the seven kinds of the other thing? And there's also the obligatory gatha in there every now and then. But the gist of the Lankavatara, people summarize it in a nutshell as mind makes everything. Yeah, it does. But what exactly does that mean? I mean, Huiko had Bodhidharma to explain this stuff to him. And Bodhidharma is, is, had said himself that only one in a million reaches awakening without the assistance of a teacher. So the Lankavatara in its sort of arcane way is definitely something that you could use a hand with. Um, 
This is one of the gathas from it. Such is the nature of things, the realm of nothing but mind. This is something the foolish don't know, bewildered by false projections. There is no seer or anything seen, no speaker or anything spoken. The appearance of Buddhas and also their teachings are merely what we imagine. Those who view such things as real, they don't see the Buddha, nor do those who imagine nothing, only those who transform their existence. So we've heard a lot in uh, different uh, Mahayana sutras about um, the relative and the absolute and uh, conventional teachings. And what the Langavatara goes into is basically that any of these things, be it the absolute, be it the relative, be it uh, the jackalope or the not jackalope, even the word emptiness are all characterized by shunyata or emptiness. Every last one of them. The Buddha goes into um, the notions that we hold, these, these stories that we tell ourselves, these little paintings that we make inside our heads where we look in a mirror and we think we see ourselves, but we really don't see ourselves. We just see a reflection of what we perceive to be ourself. Because if I scratch my nose, it doesn't itch as more anymore, uh, as much anymore. And I can see that image of a finger scratching a nose over in that mirror, or perhaps in the camera, as the case may be. And, but it's not real. The image in the mirror doesn't create any karma. The image in the mirror certainly has no self-existence of its own. It's a figment. It's the jackalope. It's that great B and B we were going to stay in. It's that, ah, you know, internalized. It's that, oh, come on, I got to do it again. It's got to get better. You know, I'm going to roll that dice and uh, snake eyes. Assuming that snake eyes is the bad one, right? I, I'm not a gambler, so either boxcars or snake eyes, whatever it is, you lose. No, I got to do it again. Um, so every time we get hung up on these things, that we uh, attach name and form to, we're gonna run into problems. We can pontificate about any number of subjects, host and guest, guest meets host. This is empty, no, this is empty. What is empty? And until we put all of that down, we're still putting ourselves in a position where we're giving ourselves hindrances. It's our own fault. As I said in a talk a few weeks ago, the Buddha's instructions were do the work. Awaken. See your true nature. Struggle through all of this nonsense that we put ourselves through. It's easy enough to think of the jackalope as not 
real, right? I mean, like I said, rabbits haven't hippity hopped into having antlers. And we can kind of wrap our heads around the fact that, yeah, you know, I'm having this argument with somebody who isn't actually in the same room with me. And I'm not convincing them any more now than I ever did when we were actually in the same room. Even though, since it's in my head, I probably could actually win this time. And we keep doing it over and over again anyway, regardless of the outcome. And we always think of that outcome as being great. Thinking, 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 and thinking again. We're not creating reality. We're only creating more illusions. And if we can apply the hair with horns example to everything that we come in contact with, what are we left with? Hang doll? Cheers.